Hi, everybody. Welcome back. And if this is your first time, welcome. My name is Max Haddad, and today I'd like to address a very serious question, a great question, a deep, serious, deep, serious question, uh, which, uh, to be honest, I'm not totally sure what I'm going to say because I don't really even know the answer to the question, which is, how do you stay sober? Hey, mister, how do you stay sober? Andrea asked me this question, and I really appreciate it because it's made me think more about it. Cover my cover my breasts. Uh, I don't go to AA. I've mentioned that before, um, which was helpful in my case. I think probably the majority of the time, huh, that would not be helpful. I'm not an anti-AA person at all. For me, I felt as though AA and my area was saying, you've been bad, you think you're great, you're not, let's break you down and build up. We're like the Marines. I needed the opposite. I needed to be told, you're great, stop thinking you're terrible, uh, and started at the bottom, now we're here or whatever. So I needed to not go. I don't feel like I'll never go again. I don't think I'll ever regularly go again. I would be surprised if I ever got to the point in my life where I felt that I needed a sponsor. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with having a sponsor. It's a good thing. Coincidentally, drinking coffee out of a one day at a time cup. Mm. Uh, I bought it for myself. It was not a gift from a sponsor. So what do I actually do to stay clean? Uh, a lot of what I'm going to say, I have been told in the past to not do. <laughs> like, uh, a big part of me staying sober is being productive, like working hard, okay? And you can't replace addiction with hard work. There's no way to work enough to not have a mental illness. You know what I mean? Like, if you are, uh, if you have schizophrenia, uh, which I don't know a lot about. So this is just a hypothetical that I'm not going to go into detail on because I'd make myself look silly and I would do the schizophrenia community a disservice. You can't just go to work a lot, right? You can't be like, no, no, I don't need lithium. I'll just do, I'll do 60 hours a week instead of 50. It's not, it's not a solution. For me, I need something, or at least I prefer to have something that I am diligently uh, and acutely focused on right now and probably for a while i don't know when it would change or why it would change is this getting a message out learning how to be a better video maker uh, a better audio balancer when i started i didn't know how to do anything uh, and i started before i made this channel about eight months ago uh, doing some gaming stuff and then realized it didn't feel like me i'm comfortable streaming video games and chatting with people but like making uh, a recording of a horror game and being like oh my gosh the ghost is so scary it didn't feel real so i didn't feel comfortable doing that but eight months ago when i got the setup i have i didn't have any idea how to do anything i had never recorded i recorded one video with a, a camera and the, of me like talk to, I guess two videos, very short videos of me back like in 2008. Uh, well, you've, I've clipped them before and you've seen them, but I didn't know how to edit anything. I didn't even cut out like the beginning and ending of those videos. Uh, so I had to learn everything and that feeling that if I didn't sufficiently learn how to do this and create digitally, I was not putting this expense to good use. Um, and don't misconstrue what I'm saying as I was frantic, panicky, like, you're a waste if you don't. It wasn't like that. Yes, I have thoughts like that, like you suck if you don't get better. But it's not, it's not as uh, egregious as that might make it sound. Um, but to have something that when I'm sitting on the couch pulls my thoughts from me, right? Like I'm not sitting there thinking, Oh man, like here's like, these are the 15 times that I failed this month 
And instead I'm thinking about, okay, so I have the, the bit rate is 3000. What if I made it 4,500? Would I notice a difference in the video quality? Like I'm, I'm thinking about that, but as much as having something to focus on is important, I am sure to give myself times when I'm not doing anything Sundays with a couple exceptions lately where Saturday ended up being the day that I relaxed like Sundays, I can't work. I don't let myself work. Even if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm like, man, you should really get to work. Like you're pumped up today. You want to make a video. You should go make a video while you feel like making a video. Uh, but I know if I don't make myself rest, there will come a time when I am so burnt out and I don't mean like, Oh, I'm bored with making videos. I mean like energy wise, I will collapse. I will fall asleep at the kitchen table, uh, which I have never sat at. I've had this house for like a year and a half and I don't think I've ever sat at the kitchen table, but you get my point. Um, I have to give myself time to actually recover too. Like I'm not a big proponent of the Monday through Friday's work, the weekends when you relax, uh, you know, like Friday party, Sunday recover. It's not like that. It's just Sunday happens to be a day that works out for me to, to chill. Um, and that time needs to be recuperative. Is that a word? Regenerative. I need to actually rest during that time. Um, there's a lot of ways to do that. I could hang out with friends, but it needs to be like, we're not going to uh, like six flags, right? Like it needs to be a very relaxed setting. Yes. Socializing kind of pumps me up, but I can't be like, Hey, you guys want to run a marathon? Like it needs to be making me feel prepped uh, energy wise for the rest of the week. So being focused on something that I am passionate about, I have to have uh, meaning and um, purpose in my life and passion. I am not someone who can be bored. I don't deal well with boredom. I don't deal well with feeling like I'm not contributing something to a greater cause. Like I can't uh, go, I can't just like go to work. It can be as simple as, okay, I'm going to dedicate myself to getting really good at guitar. Like I'm good at guitar, but get like really good at it, you know? Uh, and if I feel sufficiently passionate about that, that's good. I have a theory that the reason, you know, like relationships haven't kept me sober, which that's a really like a very sick dysfunctional sentence, not grammatically, but like you shouldn't rely on people to keep you sober is I, you know, like we'll say fall in love. We'll just keep this formula simple. Let's say it's actually love. I fall in love. And then, you know, like there's a good chance I met this girl when I was on the way to a relapse anyways, but I fall in love six months to a year down the road. I'm like, Oh, I can't stand you. Cause we aren't actually compatible. I just was so lonely that I thought we were. Uh, and it's like, not even about her. It's about me. And I rushed into something and then this thing I was passionate about, this passion I'm passionate about, this relationship is no longer something I'm passionate about. Uh, so it can't, it can't keep me sober forever. Um, you know, and I think learning that too, while I was in prison, I am just way better now than ever at being in my own skin. Even if I am totally unhappy with my, you know, recent behavior, which doesn't typically happen, but let's say I gorge, right? Like I way overeat that has a really, uh, predictable outcome. I'm going to feel crappy about myself. My sugar is going to woo. And then it's going to boo. And I'm going to feel like I don't like my body is sick, <laughs> right? Uh, I don't feel good in my body. In the past, I would have tried to escape that feeling or I would have run with it and like knocked myself out with insults in my head. Uh, and instead, now I focus on the fact that I will overcome that. I will overcome what is a temporary discomfort. I can overcome poor eating habits. I, I think about points of reference 
um, like historically in my life where I have overcome things that are way more difficult than uh, four fried chicken sandwiches from Popeye's, not a sponsor. So that leaves me feeling empowered, even if I still feel sick and disappointed in myself. I know and I have hope and uh, knowledge that I can do this. I've done worse things. I've done way harder things. I can do it. So a life with passion in it, with sufficient relaxation time and fun and uh, like internal dialogue that is friendly, you know, like treating myself like an actual friend that is having a hard time when I'm having a hard time. It's not a life I want to give away. I no longer am living a life that I could take or leave. I am living a life that I am super gratified and fulfilled by. Gratified? What? Fulfilled by, at least. Um, I wouldn't trade my current life for anything. And there is so much wrong with my life right now, but I still wouldn't do it. Um I made a video a while ago and the title was, I would go to prison again. And it upset some people um, that that was the title. And I don't think they watched the videos anymore because they were convinced that I was making that video just it's clickbait. And okay. Insider secret. Some of YouTube is making attractive titles. So <laughs> you caught me. I wanted people to click on it. But the truth is, the things that I learned in prison have saved me from constant hell. My life before I got to where I'm at now, to you know, sobriety and like learning these very basic lessons about like what I need to feel like to not want to ruin my life. Uh, before I got here, my life was agony constantly constant rebuilding and shattering of what I had rebuilt over and over again. Every six months, if I was lucky, it was sometimes less than that since I was 14. Like it was such a nightmare <laughs> for everyone that loves me and that I love to look at me with disdain every three months. Like where is my son? Where is my boyfriend? Where is my brother? You know, being in legal trouble. It was just hell. I don't have to explain it. You guys get it. So I have like, I have this life with some problems, but these lessons that I've learned that help me push through. And I have that, the alternative, which for whatever reason, this, this is where it's confusing to me too. I mentioned like yesterday or whatever, <laughs> a recent video that I struggled to remember how bad my life was when I was using um, and how bad my life was when I was on the way to using, but just white knuckling it. Like both of those lives were awful for different reasons, but they were both bad. Um, and now I can remember for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know if it was, I had enough pain or if I've just gotten older and my brain is more mature, like biologically or I don't know. I really don't know. So those are, those are some of the things I do. Um, so, but it is more about how I feel than how, like, than what I do, you know, this, what I'm doing, making these videos and learning could be any number of things, but what, how I feel is passionate, focused, content, and fulfilled by it. Those are necessary feelings for me. Maybe they, they aren't for everybody or they manifest in different ways. But if I don't feel those things, I am not going to choose sobriety. I am not going to choose life. I'm going to choose the nearest exit, stage left, high heroin, let's get out of here. Because if life isn't worth living for me, why would I live it? It's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to slug it out with life to try to have a, a modicum of contentedness every nine months. No, thank you. I'm out of here. And so I can't be in that position. So I just don't put myself in that position, uh, which is way easier now than it was when I first started doing this.
And I really happened into this by accident. And I, the origin, the seed that was planted, that's, does, that's not a good analogy. The reason I you know, stumbled into this was I was in a place that was so awful, again, prison, and I couldn't escape it by going to an AA meeting, and I couldn't escape it by calling my mom, and I couldn't, you know, there was no escape, so it was sink or swim. So I learned how to swim, and I've been able to take a lot of that with me. Uh, you know, so like, I do give prison some credit as much as I think that prison and especially in the U S needs reformed and it's not what it should be. You know, I believe that uh, being taken from everything and everyone you love is sufficient punishment. There needs to be no other punishment tacked on, right? No gleeful 19 year old should be wearing a security guards uniform, uh, given a gun and mace and told to, punk out all these adults told to like keep them in line that's unreasonable and it's so uh ruins your self-esteem i don't know what word i was going for but i still give prison credit because it put me in a, a position that was sufficiently painful to motivate me to find a way to not hate every moment and there was nothing to reach out for so i had to reach inward and those are the things that i've carried with me. Does that make some sense? Okay, great. You guys take care of yourselves. Have a good day. I'm trying some new audio settings. It might be awful. I'm looking at the, the audio input right now and it looks like it's exploding. Like this might be too loud. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon. Bye.